The wizard is cornered, but he's not done fighting yet. He flings a lance of blue energy from his wand at you. No way! I'm going to use my shield to deflect it. All right, that sounds like a defy danger roll to me. Roll plus con to endure the attack. <sighs> well, that's a four. Oof. Well, the good news is that you get an XP. The bad news is that you're frozen in place, and now he's walking closer to you. Hmm. Can I tell what's about to happen? Of course. Roll a discern realities check. Okay, I rolled an eight. So, what's about to happen? Well, it looks like the wizard has put his wand away? He's leaned over and he's whispering in the cleric's ear. You realize now he's about to tell him about that D&D podcast. We're going at 50. Do what? 50 seconds, seconds? so 10 seconds from Okay. Now. <laughs> you, get, you get five seconds to get ready for it. Chris gonna give it to you. <laughs> Adam, it looked like your beard produced hands. It was like, ee. <laughs> I had to get up near the microphone for the clap. No, yeah. that's, that's fine. All right, everybody's recording, yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, fuck. No, just kidding. <laughs> I will fly to Louisiana and gut you like a fish. I've just formatted my hard drive. Is that what I'm supposed to do? <laughs> so, I'm going to leave all that in. Hello, everybody. Thank you for downloading this latest episode of That D&D Podcast. On the last episode, know? there was a prison break. Apparently. <laughs> what are you... What? I will leave. <laughs> Bye, crap. I've already left. <laughs> what happens if I press the stop button? Too bad, Waluigi. <laughs> I'm going to mute everybody for a second, and then I'm going to keep talking so I can do the intro. On the last episode, there was a prison break. It was somewhat uh, possibly assisted, but then not because Bill is stubborn and decided that he was an independent woman and he was going to get out by himself. Uh, he bumped into Voltus outside of the uh, prison. Uh, he was promptly unhanded after being restrained and kicking Voltus real hard in the leg. Uh, Rook gave up his pursuit of the Crimson Sigil and headed back to town. Zarko headed to the prison headquarters to find out why there was a green hand on the ground and a trail of blood. And Auric met some old friends. Or, yeah, friends. Let's go with friends. So, before we get into the actual current part of things... Let's go around and introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm the DM. Uh, if you want to find me on the internet, just, I guess, go to the at, D and, at that D&D podcast on Twitter, because uh, I'm usually the one saying the dumb things on that. Uh, yeah, so next. Uh, I'll go. I'm Renee, and I'm playing Sam. And my trusty dog, Max, is currently sidelined. How sick is this dog? Well, it's only been like a day because, you know, we were fighting the Crimson Sigil as they were standing He's had like seven days in dog so, time. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, that's true. So, I, you know, he might be okay, but I haven't had time to check on him because I'm chasing Crimson Hand guys or something and burning corpses on the cliff. Um, yeah. So, that's me. Hey, I'm David. Uh, I am play Zarko the Wizard, who... Um, is a very interesting fellow, although he hasn't started a lot of the shit lately. He needs to get on that, I guess. Not since that day with the goats, really. <laughs> <laughs> Moltis has actually managed to wear pants around Zarko lately. It's weird. Could this be the start of something deeper? No. <laughs> uh, I guess I should go next. Hi, my name's Andrew, and I'll be playing Voltus, who is a lawful paladin. Not good. He has never made any claims to goodness. He is a lawful paladin. Also, one of his knees is all funny because it had a bill foot through it. It's got a big purple smiley face on the front. There's three of you. Introduce somebody. 
Go BR88. I, I know as soon as I say something, someone's going to interrupt, so yeah. Uh, hi. So I- hi, my name's Mike Jedarkson Barrard, and, uh, <laughs> Dick. and I play Rook, the lawful cleric. Notice that I didn't say good. I've never claimed that Rook is good. He is merely lawful. Uh, he's also sworn to the uh, god of bloody vengeance and uh, inappropriately interrupting friends. Go BR88. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> I just I just know it's gonna happen. Hi, I'm Adam. I'll be playing Oric the Thief tonight, and I'll be any alignment you want me to be. Nice. I want you to be lawful. That's not one of my three. Sorry. Lawful in the streets, chaotic in the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Okay. All right. Uh, so where do we want to start? In the prison with. Like five of you. I'd like to. I'd like to start with an objection. Okay. Uh, Rook did not give up <laughs> the pursuit of the uh, of the crimson whatever. Tail between his called. legs. <laughs> Slunk back. Yeah. Bravely he ran away, Sir Rook. When trouble reared its ugly head, he bravely turned his tail and fled. <laughs> no, none of that occurred. Like Sigil got bored and wandered off, basically. Yeah, we're gonna have to find some sort of super weapon. I'm anticipating like a three planet mini run is where we figure out that uh, we have to open the citadel in order to be able to shoot this thing some up. some kind of hammer of god we need a flying boat that we can yeah. catch a drill to and run it through its chest <laughs> you have to collect three oh, pieces brilliant. of a statue and bring them to the shrine of the silver monkey and only if you can complete the statue before the time is up will you be saved no don't hey, i put that i i watched that channel Nickelodeon. don't disrupt the statues i've played final fantasy 6 <laughs> I haven't, apparently. It's the one with Kafka, and there's some statues, and then the world goes to shit. It's very Kafka-esque. I'm just clowning around. Also, I'm invalidating the need for spoilers there, because that game is, like, older than me. Fair enough. Jesus dies at the end. It was an inside job. Um, so, what what were we doing? I was giving you guys the option on where do you want to start with... We're never going to Oric- start, Sorry. Apparently, let's start at the beginning. We are Forty-nine minutes past when we were supposed to all meet, and we have just okay. done the intro. <laughs> Can so I... in the beginning, there was like light, nothing no here, and then Renee, Renee, are you fucking doing this right now? <laughs> <laughs> he said to start at the beginning. Yeah. Have you met? Mike Renee? is like, I am sleepy, and everyone is like, let's filibuster this shit. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, we haven't even gotten to the courtroom scene yet come on okay so <clears throat> for the third time do you guys want to start in the prison or with auric why are those the two choices because is, everybody's is at the, with the prison bees? and auric how did we get to the prison well you headed back to town so you're not in the prison everybody else is in the prison or we can go to rook or we can go to auric <clears throat> Let's go to Auric, because I'm interested in having the B plot resolved. <laughs> see Ouch. what I did there? <laughs> yes. I, I see what you did there. Damn. <laughs> also, it's clearly the A plot, because A is for A theory. No. Oh, okay. There. Fair <laughs> point. <laughs> oh, you meant B-E-E. I get it. Now. Yes. I, yes. I just had to spell out that joke. Apparently, it was a play on words. Who knew? <laughs> Apparently. God, I love that shitty recurring joke. <laughs> like, I, I legitimately do. I'm gonna not like edit any of this, and I want to see how long this episode is. It may be like a record setter. Sweet. Well, it's not gonna be more than three hours long. Ow! Don't make any promises you can't keep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's start in but... the prison, please. No, we're starting with the uh, orc. It's more interesting. Because yep. these. Oh, there's no more bees now. Yet. Auric, you are led into a tent by your parents. This one's going to be intense. (sighs) (laughs) Fucking. I managed to get through a sentence. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, okay. That was an A plus one. Yes. (laughs) We have too many parents in here. This is like fucking dad joke central. Okay. Mm. Auric, you're led into a tent by your parents. Uh, they tell the two folk who accosted you, uh, they send them on their way, uh, you're not tied up or anything, um, and they kind of walk ahead of you. Um, so do you follow, or plan B? Uh, no, I'll follow for now. 
your dad opens one of the flaps and uh, checks to make sure there's nobody else in there, and then he motions for you and your mom to go in. Does he say this is going to be intense because he's the dad and he can't resist the dad joke? <laughs> you could tell he's holding something back. Perhaps that's it. <laughs> So you're led in there. There's a small uh, oil candle on a wooden table with a few chairs. Uh, This seems to be some sort of meeting tent. They sit down and they motion for you to sit as well. They say, so you found us. Are you here to, to join? Are you here to be on the right side of this? I thought you guys were dead. How are you even here? At first, we thought we were dead, too. This is your mom talking. Uh, She says, we were kidnapped in the middle of the night. Um, We were brought to a strange metallic man, and uh, he had a blade sticking out of his arm. He held it up to our throats. He waited a moment, and then he said that we would be of more use to him alive. He says a broken tool can can never be used again or something. Uh, it's been a while. I, I don't remember his exact wording. It was weird, but I guess he was planning on using us to get to you. The Crimson has been chasing me for the last year. I don't know why I'd want to do anything to help them. Because we said so? <laughs> do you trust not us? Not my wait, oh wait. <laughs> You're not my real dad. And he goes, no! And he gets unsummoned. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't hear any of that. Oh, good. It was bad. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We'll fix that in post. Andrew, I'm not reading chat anymore. I wish I could close the chat. I can close chat. You I'm totally going. can. I also haven't John. typed any of that for like 10 minutes. Well, I I just glanced over. Mistake number one. Yep. Sorry, what were we talking about? <laughs> Your dad looks at you and he says, I know you have some checkered history with this organization, to say the least. But it seems like unless something drastic happens, they will be tearing through this town and killing most of the people in it. So even if you don't agree with their policies, it may be good, at least for now, to be on this side. I've been on their side before. They're just a bunch of cultist whack jobs. I don't know why I'd want to help them again. And even if this town falls, there's always another town. Be that as it may, there are a lot of people who would die if, well, perhaps you can affect some change from the inside. I don't, I don't know. We want to do something, but we're, we're, we're old. We're, we're scared. There's not a whole lot that we can do in this situation. You haven't come across that amulet that he's been looking for by any chance, have you? No, I still have no idea what he's talking about. Great. Are you, sh- are you sure? Positive. I, I've i never seen the thing. I think I remember him saying that we could go free if, if that was ever brought back. It seems to be pretty important to him, but he won't go into any details about what it does or why it's important. Maybe it's sentimental? Do fake people have sentiments? What does the amulet look like? We don't know. He just keeps saying he wants the amulet back. I'm not even sure if he knows at this point. What's stopping you from just leaving? Why can't you just get out of here? We've tried before. He's tracked us down relatively quickly every time. I'm not sure why he doesn't have us bound up. Well, there's going to be some chaos here in the next couple days when he attacks the town. Just disappear. That's a good idea. I can tell you the way to a pretty nice little town in the south that we've recently discovered. That'd be nice. He he looks around. There's a little scroll or something. Because if you want to just write that down, we'd we'd appreciate it. Okay. Um, Are these, um, is this like a religious town or? No, there's no real religion there. It's just a a quiet little town. Um, Don't piss off the giant gray what was it called again gray render gray render yeah um i can't remember the guy's name either it's been too long you have other things going through your mind right now it's fine to forget the name yeah on them don't piss off a gray giant uh we can <laughs> the gray render yeah i mean we can I'm, I'm not sure what makes a giant angry but we'll 
do our best. Are you are you heading there, or are you going back to the town to? Are you, are, are you and your friends no, leaving? What 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 are you? What's the plan? I'm, I'm here to find my cousin. They took him prisoner. Your cousin? Yeah, your Griff. They took Griff. They look back and forth at each other. Oh yeah, uh, right. Yes, Griff. Of course. You do remember that you have a nephew, don't you? Sure. He's uh, he looks he looks sort of like us due to genetics, of course. It's Griff. Yeah. Okay, so now the situation doesn't seem right at all. You, so I need to... You should drink more sleeping poison. I need to take a second here to try to figure out what's going on with them. Yeah, that would probably be... Uh, fuck, I'm not assess the situation, but whatever is it called. Is it discern realities? Is that what we're thinking? Yeah. I got the all the stuff from like the friends at the table playing, where it's different names for everything. Yeah. And it's breaking my brain. Um, I'm trying to find the basic move list. Yep. Uh, discern realities, yes. Because spout lore would be uh, consulting accumulated knowledge about something, and discern realities is closely study a situation or person. Spout lore about your own parents to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, I know based on experience that you have a scar on your back. Can you show that to me? That's a totally legit thing. Um, so yes, roll me, uh, 2d6 plus wisdom, please. 2d6 plus 2. A 10. Alright, on a 10 plus you get to ask three questions from the list below. What happened here recently? What is about to happen? What should I be on the lookout for? What here is valuable or useful to me? Who's really in control here? And what here is not what it appears to be? Well, let's start with that last one. These people, though they appear to be your parents, ain't. There's a weird, it's not like a shimmer, but there's something about their skin. It seems like it doesn't fit right. Are they fucking changelings? They're the whole camp of changelings, just so you know. Um, Sounds like we've got some sword putting to do. <laughs> I'll put on my dancing boots. Time for the old shooty stabby. Let's just go with um, what here is useful or valuable to me. Changeling livers. There is a tent you saw it on the way in uh to this one it seems to have a more concentrated guard around it and you could hear the like the clanking of chains so if there would be prisoners it would probably be there okay and i don't it's not really much for the third question but we'll just say what should i be on the lookout for uh, as you're talking uh, you're sitting down and you're facing away from the entrance to the tent and the talking with your parents had you almost distracted enough to not notice somebody coming up. They got weird doughy pink fingers and they're trying to put them around your neck when you turn around. Ew. It's a good thing you asked that question. <laughs> not like this person's fat, like this person's body is made of Play-Doh and is weird and malleable. Does this look at all like what the changeling was doing, or is this just something else completely different? You haven't seen a changeling in this state, so you wouldn't be able to tell for sure. Well, we saw him morphing, didn't we? Yep. Did you? Yep. Yeah, we saw him go from a person to a crocagator. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's true. Uh, it does seem like that quick intermediate point. Okay. Um, I want to stab his hand with a sleeping poison. <laughs> Oh, that's really big. <laughs> right, uh, for that, I will need a hack and slash roll, please. Of course. <laughs> Not to fight danger? Because he's about to get choked, right? Yeah, serious. Well, he's trying to attack an enemy in melee. Well, I'm not trying to do damage, though. I'm not trying to hurt the guy. You might hurt his feelings. Okay. This is not gonna be like a D eight of needle damage. Okay, so how about this? Do the uh, do the defy danger dex to get out of the way quickly enough, and in doing so, if you succeed, you'll also plop him with the, the needle. Okay. Plop the technical term. Mm. That would be an eleven. So how are you trying to get out of the way? Don't, like describe the scene to me. I guess if he's behind me, um, reaching for around my neck, I'm gonna sort of dive over the table. Well, after, you know, stabbing him, 
with the needle and then diving over the table. Okay. Uh, perhaps knocking over that lamp as well. Yeah. Uh, so in the process, the table uh, kind of tumps over. The lamp spills uh, off the table. Some of the oil begins to pool on the grass. Uh, when you stab this guy with a needle, usually you're used to hitting bone or there being some sort of resistance. Uh, but you get that needle all the way in. <laughs> My favorite needle. That's what she said. Your finger kind of pokes in some and leaves this weird little indentation in his arm. Oh, that's disturbing. And you see a little a little patch. Looks like a like a time accelerated disease or something spreading over his arm, and it looks kind of the same tone as your skin. But he passes out, and then the the skin goes back to being weird and pink and doughy. Didn't the changeling has to have to eat and bite in this world to get your person? Maybe his hand, I mean, his arm is covered in tiny mouths. Oh God. <laughs> He has cilia. <laughs> Somehow, that got even creepier than it already was. So your parents uh, stand up and begin to hiss, and their skin does this weird bubbly wave thing as uh, they lose a little bit of cohesion uh, from their appearance and turn into some weird amalgamation of your parents and the weird pink Play-Doh monsters. All right, um... I missed your description of what was the state of the lamp currently. Uh, it has fallen over, and the oil is spilling out onto the floor. Uh, based on your expert uh, knowledge of how fire works, that's going to be a bad situation relatively soon. <laughs> okay. I want to flip the table okay. and cut a hole in the back of the tent. I'm assuming I had to dive away from the door. You said I had the back my back to the door. Yeah. I, I'm, you don't even need to roll for that. That's cool. You could just do it. I mean... If you fail to flip a table, it's just a table is standing upright, and who gives a shit? So you, with a deft slash, cut a hole in the tent. Uh, the side that you're exiting from is leading you away from that uh, clanking chain tent. But uh, the hole that you just cut will take you into the forest relatively quickly. Um, how fast is this fire getting off, kicking off? As you're leaving the tent, uh, it's just starting to uh, spark up the oil that's on the ground. And it doesn't spread ridiculously quickly like you'll see in the movie. It's uh, It takes a few seconds for it to get even to the size of like uh, your palm. But it's slowly picking up speed and uh, size. So probably within the next, uh, let's say, 10 or 12 seconds, it'll probably be uh, about the size of the table. Okay. I will... I still want to try to help out Griff. Mm -hmm. That's why I came here. So I'm going to see if I can maybe circle around a couple tents to get back to the uh, guard, guarded tent. Sure. Uh, are you trying to be stealthy about it? Yeah. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go with let's go with another Defy Danger Dex to see how sneaky-like you can be. And give it uh, an extra plus one since there is a tent off in the distance that is about to catch on fire. Okay. And what I also... this probably still pertains to my discern realities, right? Since I'm going for the guard tent? Yes. Or is this... Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You, you, another... you do get a plus one to that as well, huh? Yeah. So that's another ten. Very nice. Uh, so, you know, you, you did a quick uh, analysis of the camp, uh, so you know kind of where the general guard area is. You're able to skirt around that, and a little while after you duck behind one of the tents kind of close to the, the prisoner tent, you hear, Hey! What's that over there? Looks like something's on fire. You two, go check it out. And then two of the guys from the guarded tent uh, go rush over to see what the hell's going on. Uh, there comes a high-pitched, shrieking, hissing sound from inside as a pink play doh figure comes out just wreathed in flames. And it's spinning because nobody knows how to stop, drop, and roll yet. <laughs> haven't figured that one out yet. No. Nope. They don't even figure out in movies, so you know. Uh, so right now, all attention is not directed at you. There is one guard left at that tent. Uh, out of curiosity, do they seem to be acting like, yes, this pink blob is perfectly acceptable to be in our camp, or, oh shit, there's a pink blob person? Uh, they are definitely reacting negatively to the fire. They do not seem to be reac reacting negatively to the pink person. Like, they, they seem like, oh, whatever, it's squishy people, that's whatever, it's cool. Okay, um, I think then... Well, I still have one more uh, dose of sleeping poison, so I'm going to 
walk up to the guard, basically like, hey, shouldn't you be helping him with uh, that fire? And put him to sleep, too. He says, what are you talking... Oh. And then clumps to the ground. He's wearing leather armor, so there's no, uh, you know... Loud clatter of metal. Yeah. Uh, does he happen to have any keys on him? Uh, he has this white... It, it doesn't look like it's made out of metal, but it looks like a key of some sort. Looks like it's shaped out of bone or something. I better grab that just in case, and then I'm going to head into the tent. Uh, in the tent, you see uh, a bound and hooded figure. Uh, their leg leg is gone? Yeah, what, they're missing a leg. Yeah, he uh, should be. There's a prosthetic uh, missing. It It's not attached to him right now. Uh, also in the tent is a uh, sleeping guard uh, with a like knocked over a uh, flagon of some sort of ale and uh, a locked chest. Okay. Um, I take the uh, hood off of Griff, I'm assuming. Yep, it's him. Now try to make sure, you know, keep make sure he stays quiet and check to see what kind of bindings are on him. He is, he has like chains around his arms and they are locked with a pretty rudimentary looking padlock. Um, and also you you notice when you take the hood off that it looks like somebody was just beating the shit out of him for a while. Like one of his eyes is swollen shut. It looks like he's missing some teeth. Uh, his jaw seems slightly out of alignment. That sort of thing. <sighs> okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I want to experiment on the poor guy, but a while back in the cave, we had several vials of magical red fluid. Mm-hmm. The rest of the supplies in that box were beneficial things, so hopefully this is a beneficial red <laughs> fluid. <laughs> um, I don't remember how many vials you said we had, maybe at least a couple, I'm assuming. Let me pull up your sheet, because I think it is actually on there. Did you actually give me a number in my list? I can pull that up, too. I believe I did. I could, of course, be wrong. It has happened before. Hmm. Or maybe I didn't. You have the oil, you have a flash bomb, you have two powder charges on a rope, uh, the weird Neat. cloak, a blue glowing crystal, two bottles of the Drunken Hawk Special Reserve. How much loot did you throw at that other team? They found a, a chest, and they made friends with a person, so she gave them some of their wine to they sell They made friends in town. with the city and only brutally put another one to death, kind of. And only got the loot that is an army of fucking skeletons as friends. <laughs> they were children. We see how it is. Yeah, seriously. Okay, uh, so I have an unknown number of vials of red magical Yeah, let's say, let's say you've got like two vials of red fluid. All right, well, we will hope that this is good stuff, and I'm going to see if I can get him to drink it. He, you, you tilt it into his mouth. Uh, he tries to drink it. He coughs a little bit of it up, but most of it goes down. He keels over dead. Good job. Ah. <laughs> he morphs into his final form. He says, I'm sure there's things in the world that taste worse than that, but I'm having trouble thinking of any right now. <laughs> uh, but you see his, his bruises start to fade a little bit. Uh, his... I mean, he's not growing teeth back or anything, but or a uh, leg. His breathing's cool. a little bit easier. Uh, his eye is a little bit less swollen. Uh, it seems to have accelerated uh, his his healing process for now, at least. Okay. Um, does this key work on his manacles, or is that just something I need to pick? The key seems to be shaped differently than the manacles. Okay. Well, I'm gonna see if I can just unlock his uh, manacles then. Sure thing. And since you are a thief, you got the tricks of the trade ability mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, whatever you call it. Uh, another ten. Ten. Oh, you're... I don't, yep, you did it. You've solved the handcuff puzzle. <laughs> Turns out it's all in the wrist. Mm. God. <laughs> damn. It is. And does the... Well, I guess while I'm here, does that key work on the chest? Yes. Okay, I want to double check to make sure there's nothing weird about this chest first before I unlock it. Sure thing. Why don't you assess that situation? Would Trap Expert be more applicable in this situation? That'll work. Yeah, Trap Expert. I can't words right now. That would be... Oh, I rolled a one and a two. Yeah. Well, uh, the good news about that is Mark and XP. And it seems fine. <laughs> of all the chests that you've seen that weren't trapped, I mean, this is probably one of them. I have a great track record with chests so far. 
I'm Are we not doing phrasing anymore? One for one for setting off all the traps. This booty does not seem trapped. Boop, boop, fuck, I got nothing. So you put that key in, yeah, yeah, is that what you're doing? Unless you gave me the plus one from Discern Realities earlier. Yeah, I guess I'm... You could not tell from outside that there was a chest in here. <laughs> <laughs> this is valuable to me. No, okay, so yeah, I, I'll just, not suspecting anything amiss, I'll use this key. You open it up, and you realize the reason that it didn't ping your spider senses as something valuable to you is that all that's in here is a prosthetic leg and some sort of tube that looks like it's made out of bone or something. It's it's in like its own specially uh, knit cloth sleeve. It's also filled with snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Okay, um, well, I'll get Griffith's leg back so he can get out of here a little bit easier and just pocket the weird tube thing for later sure and then i'm gonna see if we can, i can help griff get out of this camp quietly he he tries to finagle his knee into the prosthetic takes a little bit of work in but he gets the leather strap that's attached to it ties it to his uh actual leg meets and takes a few unsteady steps he says all right are we... first before we go anywhere are you really you <laughs> you've kicked my ass like four times in the past Day or as two. far as I can tell, there's some. This camp is made up out of changelings. Do you remember the changeling from the? Uh, I don't remember how much you remember from that trip back from the swamp. But yeah, um, I, I remember somebody killed a weird squishy guy. Yeah, two of them were posing as my parents too. So uh, yeah, I, I everything's a little bit blurry with what well, with my eye. Uh, it looked kind of like you, but you always looked like your parents, and it sounded like them, but I don't remember your parents ever hating me that much, so uh, I, I, w I hoped it wasn't them, so you're not going to bring me to them, are you? No, we're getting out of this camp. We're getting you back into the town. Oh, great. Behind the walls. That that would be... I would appreciate that. Uh, So the the guard that's unconscious, or uh, sleeping at the, the tent, flap entrance does he have a weapon uh the one that you gave the needle to or the one who was drunk at his post the needle he has a sword it's pretty basic like it, it almost looks like the starter armor that the guards get it's like a, a short sword yeah that's why i just want to give something to griff so that he's yeah. armed and then we'll try to get uh, make for the uh forest as quickly as possible uh, so, if you would like to escape into the woods, um, I'm going to say, are you, like, putting um, Griff's arm around you so you can help hold him up, or are you just trying to, like, lead him, or what's the, the plan for getting both of you out of there? Is he still having trouble moving around, or is he okay with his prosthetic and the healing potion? He's hobbling a little bit, but you haven't really <laughs> seen him a whole bunch since the incident, so this could just be the way he gets around, you're not sure. Uh, no, I'll lend him a shoulder if he needs help to move faster. Okay. Uh, so for that, why don't you roll me a Defy Dangerous Strength? To oh, of course. Keep from falling over. No, that's not a plus one. No, no, no. What happens if he fails? I rolled a five. Make him take a hit points worth of damage. A low number. It is very much a low number. Okay. So, Griff stumbles, and in an attempt to right himself... He swings out with one of his arms. Unfortunately for you, that's the arm with the sword in it. So roll me a d6. Oh, great. Damn it. A six. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Take your armor off. Okay, no. Yeah. Take the number of your armor value off. Damn it. Take your armor off. Watch for doing that thing. Damn. Sorry, I just... Uh... I can't really see, and uh, I feel like somebody just punched me in the face for the past four days. <laughs> so, uh, you guys, you know, you, you regain your footing, and right when you're about to clear the camp, uh, you hear uh, from you know, behind you uh, a couple voices that say, the, the prisoner's missing! Find him! Now! So... Um, are you gonna like book it or try to hide from you know where you are or what's the what's your reaction to that? Um, I think hiding right at the tree line is probably a bad idea. So we will continue moving deeper into the cover. 
give me a defy danger con to just kind of soldier on through the pain and get both of you out of the area. A nine. Stumble, hesitate, or flinch. God damn it. Hmm. Trying to think of a hard bargain or ugly choice. Griff is actually a changeling. (laughs) (laughs) You feel another stab. (laughs) It's the purpose Uh, all along. uh, You get to what you think is a safe clearing. And as you're scuttling y'all's way across, uh, a guard comes out. He looks like one of the town guards. And when he gets close enough to you, uh, you see him pull his sword out. And he says, you're not allowed to... uh, So your choices are either you can let Griff fight him, or you could fight him. (laughs) Oh, jeez. Griff is not in the condition of fighting anyone right now, so I I will do that. I will help. Or I will fight. Oric, I can I can do this. Are you sure? Look, <laughs> yeah. and he, he kind of wiggles his sword in that guy's direction. <laughs> no, you, you need to keep on moving. You keep on going towards town. Okay. Uh, do you need my weapon? I I am I am okay. All right. Good luck. I'll see you see you at mom's house. And he starts uh, trying to go around where the uh, the fake town guard is, and the guard's going to try to. I'm going to distract the guard by throwing a dagger at his face. <laughs> that is a relatively good distraction, depending on how well you roll your volley. An 11? 11, yup. Right in the head. Uh, roll some damage. Six damage. Whew. All right. It's a great distraction. <laughs> uh, he looks at you. He's got a dagger sticking out of like the top of his helmet. Uh, there's blood actually coming through the slit in his weird... Uh, leather cap that he's wearing. He's a little bit woozy on his feet, but he's going to uh, two-hand hold his sword, and he's going to try to charge at you and do uh, an overhead swing to, I don't know, do some damage before he bleeds out. All right, I want to step to the side and try to, like I did earlier, disarm the disarm by stealing his weapon out of his hands. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Defy Danger Dex to me. Uh, Fourteen. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's all right, I guess. <laughs> you literally steal his arms. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't notice. You take his weapon and you also trip him. So uh, for the next few seconds, he is prone and trying to uh, shakily get to his feet. Uh, let's just make sure he doesn't. Finish him. Uh, he is a helpless enemy, so you can just do your damage. Two damage. <laughs> two luckily that is enough to kill him even though it's a two he he goes to push himself up his arms just feel like spaghetti mom's spaghetti yeah mom's spaghetti yes Don't these weak arms are heavy he's slowly getting back to his knees and then a sword right through the back of the neck makes sure that doesn't actually happen well, and he's, he's pushing himself up too so he like pushes himself up through the sword somewhere no, I got this! <laughs> uh, he loses all control of his limbs, and uh, his, his, you know, he dies. Yeah, I'm not going to like detail. He, he, he dies in the, in the gross, wet dirt. Uh, and from where you stand, uh, you see Griff. Like, I don't know, like 15 feet away. He's moving real slow. Hey, well, I'll retrieve my dagger from his face and <laughs> catch up to Griff. There's a gross, wet sound as you pull that dagger out clean it on his tunic or something and you escape back into the woods with griff are you heading straight to town uh yeah i don't think there's anywhere else we can go outside of the walls right now fair enough a half an hour later uh you make it back into the town gates or you make it to the town gates uh there are a bunch of guards there who try to make they hold their weapons up and they say explain what you're doing why were you outside of the gates? Uh, uh, I had learned about one of your men was captured by the Crimson Hand, and I retrieved him from their camp. Uh, this is Griff. Do you recognize any of the guys up on the wall that might help? Yeah, that's that's Tomas right there. That son of a bitch owes me like 12 coin. It's Tomas? Where's my coin, Tomas? Uh, and he's like, fuck, it's Griff. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can go in. Open the gate! (laughs) 
and you are allowed back into the town. Uh, medic is called for Griff. My god, this guy's leg is missing. <laughs> <laughs> when, when they see to him, uh, the medic also looks over at you and he says, You got uh, a little cut there, are you okay? I, 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 it would be appreciated, yeah. Sure. I bet how about half health. Uh, less than half. He opens a satchel thing, and he applies some some band-aids and an, a gross-smelling ointment to it. He wraps the cloth bandage around it, and roll me a d6, and you heal that much health. One. You heal one health. <laughs> Your leg smells significantly worse, uh, for little actual reason, apparently. <laughs> the ointment must be bad. You should feel bad. Okay, fine relinquishing control back to the rest of the group now. Sure. Um, the last thing uh, for your little scene, uh, oh. one of the guards is going to say, the rest of your group's over in the prison visiting the, the the escaped murderer who was recaptured. And, he, you know, he points over in the direction of the prison, and you hear a pained scream coming from Griff, and as you look over at him, it seems that the wounds that that potion had cured, uh, they're coming back pretty much immediately. So his eye puffs back up, his face is bruised, the bruises come back on the skin, um, and he seems to Jeez. be living through the pain all over again. Potion of okay. temporary cleric. We'll be using that potion then. At least it got us back to town. Yep. You can use that when, like, we're interrogating someone. Yeah. You're gonna feel it's all over again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fuck, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that is Voltus in a one-line description. Yes. Also, I've got new inspiration for Voltus from Bravely Second, and oh my god, the Bravely Default and Bravely Second games are just... They look cutesy, and they are pitch fucking black. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move over to... Um, uh, Rook, when, when you got back into town, what were your plans? What did you do? You're muted, I can't hear you. Well, that makes my snarky response less funny. Good. <laughs> That's hard to do. I went ahead and leveled up to try to uh, be better for fighting this guy next time he shows up. But uh, <clears throat> So to recap, Rook's last fight with uh, Crimson Dynamo. Crimson Soldier. Uh, Red Tornado, whatever this guy's name was. <laughs> um, whole bunch of punches were thrown and effectively no nothing landed or nothing was of value occurred. So Rook's going to go find the heaviest hitters that he knows, which are Voltus and Bill. Okay. Well, that will lead you to the prison. A little bit of asking around. Uh, it's also, pretty, uh, Zarko? Uh, yeah. It's pretty... Uh, the, the word has spread relatively quickly around town that somebody actually managed to escape from the prison. Uh, at least for a time. And then the burned man recaptured him and brought him back. God damn it! Now a bunch of hippies are going to go out and do acid in the desert and name it after me. I, I <laughs> That's how that started. Well, I mean, it's better than them doing it in the city. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to lead to the prison, and we will get to that in just a moment. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break since it's been about an hour. So why don't we all take uh, like four or five minutes, uh, go to the bathroom, refill drinks, and we'll reconvene. Keep your recording going so we don't have to reclap, and uh, we all... <laughs> <sighs> I wish I had the option to, like, kick somebody out for ten seconds as a joke. <laughs> You'd have to kick two someone's out, Chris. There's a restaurant in Seattle called Icon, and in the bathroom they have uh, pictures of waterfalls and, like, streams rising and, like, things like that. And, you know, whirlpools set to uh, Ride of the Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing, <laughs> just constantly when you're in the restroom. Choose a new advanced move from your class. Really? Bonk robot. I need, I need to fail three more times. Yeah, but they'll be like level five. You gotta remember that we're like six levels behind you guys. Negative two. Actually, I think I'm pretty close to even with those fuckers because I fail a lot. So uh, I'm thinking I pick up Resurrect and we just kill Bobby and bring him back to life. And it's like, yeah, he's served a life sentence. Nice. Yeah, but he's killed two people, so we have to kill him twice. Oh, that's gonna take another day. Yeah. Yeah, I think my next level, I start get to, I get to start inventing new poisons. Nice. This one do. Ooh. It, it causes the GM to be mad at me for five minutes. <laughs> well, Bill's passed out from blood loss, I guess. He so. is. That is actually. He went uh, into shock, which is what you would normally expect to happen. 
Zark, do I have a really good idea of how we can stop Bill from breaking out of prison again? What's the duration on Charm Person? <laughs> um, hold on, let me check my. Because I think it's until sheet. you take a hostile action against him. Um, I would think this is this is just me, uh, GM brainstorming. I would think the next time he went to like reattune his spells, oh, that it would be like a reset a friend counter until they take damage or you prove otherwise. Yeah, and then yeah, like if you go for but, a rest or whatever. But I was gonna say like if you go um, there every morning and do it, then it could feasibly last all day. I mean, we've we've had where like Bill is willing to consider the advice of friends and then still do what <laughs> Bill wants. <laughs> that is very true. I was more like I just I came up with an idea where basically there is a prison somewhere that is like. It doesn't have bars or guards or whatever. It just has like a bunch of wizards all casting charm person on all the prisoners. <laughs> oh my word! Andrew, let me tell you about how horrible you are. Oh, <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> no, okay. write this shit down because this needs to be a place. Yeah. Um, also, I came up with the idea of basically just taking Zarko's spellbooks and making them into places, um, but like a temple to some god that just has cast fear on everything. <laughs> wow. You must confront your fears to be seen worthy by the god. I was looking forward to the uh um the trial today because I was hoping I'd get up on <laughs> on the bench and Zarko could start ranting about how he doesn't recognize the authority of this court or the gods that Oops. grant them authority. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh you guys Wait, wait, wait. How how are we going to know what to edit out? What do you mean we? I'm the one who's got to edit shit out. <laughs> I usually Clap. just go and, and cut out sec like I'll listen to a segment and I'm like does that need to be in there uh, yeah and then just leave it usually <laughs> I would suggest is that good oh then we wouldn't have a podcast yeah <laughs> I, clearly we would there's like six people out there who's people like us $24 us a month after fees amount alright <laughs> There's a sucker born every minute. Wow. I'm leaving that in. I, okay, I God, I'm so. pretty sure you do need to cut out. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I hope so, because the opinions of Adam do not reflect the opinions of the rest of the cast. <laughs> <laughs> I need to find where the, the editing line is. What do we have to say to make Chris edit the pie? So we know Whale Vagina is definitely in the edited out. No, yeah. see, Renee edited Whale Vagina. I didn't. Yeah. I would have left it in. So to be fair, the Whale Vagina conversation was like 20 minutes long. Yeah, it was, it was great. Really long, it was and integral to the plot. There were parts of it that didn't make much sense without what had what we had said right. previous to starting recording. Nothing yeah. about whale vagina makes much sense. Well, that's also true. If you would have introduced a whale later on in the session, that would have been necessary for the campaign for it to be in there. I know a lot of uncomfortable things about this whale's vagina. Time for a bluff check. I like how like we keep bringing this up, and it is going to be like our pasta incident, and I. That it pisses off like at least a, both of our viewership. Well, what's his name? The guy that I accidentally googled Will Vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant to press escape. Accidentally. I meant to press okay. escape. But like the fourth... Wait, did you just say I meant to press escape? Yeah. <laughs> you meant to press escape and then whale vagina came out of your hand. I pressed There's going to be like Google <laughs> ads I'm not now. That link. I am not clicking that link. Guys, oh, I promise God. that it's almost safe for work. <laughs> Why? Who drew this? Why? It's not it's not anywhere. It's it's easily the best one that I could find. <laughs> that is a scientific chart, all right. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, okay, so I think everybody actually at this point is either at or headed to the prison. So let's say we fast forward mm, 15 or 20 minutes for everybody to actually convene in the prison. Uh, on the trip back, Bill actually lost consciousness due to the blood loss. And shock. And shock. Shock of betrayal. Ooh, burn. Mike, the number of spells you can attune, uh, it's based on... So, now that you're level 3, it's your level plus 1 worth of spell level. So you could do 4 level 1 spells, or a level 3 spell, and 1 level 1 spell, that sort of thing. Okay. So, yes. Uh, Bill actually passed out. He was brought to the infirmary, where they did a real 
uh, haphazard shitty job of putting like a bandage bandage on it and applying like a hot iron to kind of cauterize it. Cauterize, cauterize. Sorry, I have no idea where that came over me. I apologize. <laughs> apologize for the cauterize. Yes, cauterize. So Sorry. you hear a scream and then a thump as a relatively large half orc falls unconscious on the table again. Uh, he's dragged out. Uh, thrown into a new cell in solitary that has extra doors and it's got two guards on you know the other side of the door from where bill is hey hey rick calls out to the guards listen don't be too rough with him if you mess up the corpse i can't bring it back can i get someone to like heal the footprint out of my knee yeah um brooke can do that whenever he wants now so he just casts cure light wounds on you until you're good damn why don't you roll me that spell cast? Because I want to see if it goes really badly. <laughs> it's rote. Rote just means you can't forget it. You still got to cast it. Oh, he can forget it if he fucks up the roll. Mm. It just doesn't count against his prepared spells. Right, yeah, that's the thing. One second. I want to see if I can increase this. Damn it. Thirteen. Very nice. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I think, I think he pulls it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll do. <laughs> On the good oh. side. <laughs> but not your leg, right? We're not. Yeah, yeah, no, that... At your touch, wounds scab and bones cease to ache. Heal an ally you touch of 1d8 damage. Ooh. I think Bill hit you for like. 10? It was like. No, it was a d10 plus. I, th I think it hit you for like 14. Yeah. I, I was down 10 damage after armor, and I think I have two armor right now because my shield's fucked. Okay, so I, I was wrong. Cure Moderate Wounds is now wrote for me. So that was Cure Moderate Wounds. Okay. Uh, cure Moderate Wounds... 2d8 damage. Yes, 2d8. Damn! That's, um, that's wrote? Yep. Alright, so now the question is, how long can Voltage last if we let uh, Bill and Rook take turns punching and healing? <laughs> the average damage that Bill does will be greater than the amount that I heal yes. by one or two points. Actually, but you could get lucky with the rolls. He'll, basically, okay. Bill is going to chip damage Voltus to death. Yeah, but Zarko's still interested in seeing how long that takes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Zarko, are you aware that this con construct shrugged off damage magically? Magical damage? Uh, yes, that is... I I cast a magic missile at it and it did not care at all. Yeah, I did about that. I did all sorts of uh, divine bullshit and none of it stuck. So I'm kind of mad. Um, and you're probably the smartest one of us. Uh, is there some sort of I don't know magical hammer or some sort of large, powerful, destructive thing that we could go get and kill him with or strip his uh, magical whatever the hell protection that he got? I, I thought it was one of these these Warforge constructs from hundreds, thousands of years ago, but I don't remember anything about them being immune to the magic. So, yeah, they didn't they didn't teach me that in the seminary, and um, I blew my <laughs> leg off at war. So, I mean, um, I, I, the best thing I can think of is let's dig a big hole that we can drop a drop it in, and then drop a big rock in the hole and crush it, or just like seal it there, right? <laughs> Chris, uh, is there any is there any lava around? Um, there is no lava in the immediate vicinity <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> That's perfect. You don't get a fail XP for that because there's no Mount Doom anywhere. No. It's the true reality. <laughs> Come on, man. You broke Chris. Or, or Spout Lore. Spout Lore. I'm trying yeah. to find... Spout Reality. Spout Reality. That's it. I discern Lore. I think I should get XP every time Chris sighs loudly. You 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 guys would all be the maximum level. One does not simply roll to find Mount Doom. <laughs> Feel bad. Why not? I mean, have you ever seen Order of Walking Score? That's why we can't just walk. I was trying to see if there was like an applicable move, but there's really not one for this. Um, I mean, there's the sun. The have sun? you really thought about the heat death of the sun, though, man? Somebody says that if you don't worship hard enough, that sun goes out. So you shouldn't be worrying about trying to find lava. You should be trying to worry about that source of heat going out, man. 
take 1d4 emotional damage. No. <laughs> Seems legit. No. Jokes. Uh, you don't remember anybody saying anything about uh, any nearby sources of molten rock or anything like that. The closest thing that you know of is the small furnace at the blacksmith shop. Okay, well, Zorko, what do you think about that? Good luck putting him in the kiln long enough to get him the melt. Also, as you ponder this plan, you remember the uh, glowing molten red hand on his chest that he walks around with like it doesn't bother him. Okay, I'm I'm firmly in, in, in Zoom territory mm. here. I'm going to need some advice from someone else. Well, look, I mean, you know, fucking things up with magic is sort of my thing, so... <laughs> Right, right. So, when it doesn't work, I'm kind of at a loss. Right, so my, my thing is also just fucking things up with magic and then bonking it really hard. That didn't seem to have an effect. Um, so I figured we break Bill out. I'm sorry, I figured we figure out some way to <laughs> cause Bill's uh, uh, sentence to basically be um, I'll put some sort of collar on him and control him like he was some sort of wild animal. Like? point him in the direction of the thing that we need to kill and uh, if he doesn't do it Bill isn't immune to magic missile. Oh, yes. By the way, by the way, I, I didn't realize it at the time, but um, and Zarko pulls Bill's hand out of his pouch. Apparently this belongs to Bill. Is there any way we can reattach it? Apparently yeah. this is Bill's. No problem. No problem. I, I Apparently. Got and, if, and if I don't get it, um, there are plenty of bones in here for me to fashion a um, hook. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> I think I think Rook is gonna acquire the nickname of Sawbones. So, so yeah, can we <laughs> can we have him roll to give Bill a hand? Sawbones Rook. <laughs> God okay, roll, damn it! Roll, roll that was ones. nice. <laughs> Are you sure you don't have kids? Because your dad joke game is on point. <laughs> I I'm just practicing to be the cool uncle. That's all. Oh, bad news, Bill. <laughs> you rolled a five, jeez. You really want that level, don't you? Oh god, yes. <laughs> he needs more spells. That's right. Fifth okay. level? Oh yeah. Rook, you failed the crap out of that roll. So you go to Bill's unconscious body, you hold the hand out. Attach it backwards. You hold up his stump and you try to squish him back together. Uh, the hand has gross, meaty, drippy bits, but the stump has actually been sealed with that hot iron, so right. it is not receptive to reattachment. And, and that and that's okay. Like I said, uh, Bill Bill's walking around on a peg leg made from his shin bone. Rug. What yeah. is that? Is it Bill? Okay. Apparently, I've got whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Rook is walking around in a peg leg made from his own shin bone. So Bill doesn't act so Bill's gonna have to deal with the fact that uh, if Rook can't put it back on and heal it magically, I'll just fashion some sort of temporary hook, possibly out of the bones for keepsake. Okay. Not oh. not for now. We'll put it we'll put it in an ice bath and we'll come back to it later. Yeah. Yeah. I like the sentimental important. value of that. Yeah, I mean it's like it's like uh, what's yeah. his face? It carries around the finger bones. Yeah. Waste not one not, you know? Pretty much. Pixie, stop licking your butt right next to me. Thanks. Go lick, go lick your butt over there, dog. For fans Seriously. of the show, Pixie is his dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's big and dumb and makes the loudest licking noises, so I looked over to see what it was, and she's just going to town on her own butt, so... Y you might consider letting her outside. Mm. She has a doggy door. Pixie, she has a doggy outside. door. Outside. Go. But I want you around while I'm licking my butt. Good girl. Yeah, that's pretty much the way that works. Yeah, it's best to have a spotter. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> as you guys are milling about, uh, one of the guards comes up and he says, "He's supposed to be on trial tomorrow, right?" Yeah. He's supposed to be on trial like three fucking months ago, though. Well, he. Uh, I mean, do you think he's gonna wake up? I guess he doesn't really <laughs> need to be. Does 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 it matter? No, I guess not. I just. I want. Look, speaking as his attorney, <laughs> it's probably in his best interest that he doesn't. Z Zarko crosses his arms and makes a derisive snorting noise and sort of says, "Okay, I get less attorney, more spiritual advisor." <laughs> right. Make um, a statement well, in his own trial. That was my job. <laughs> uh, you guys are free to 
hang out in the mess hall for another well, probably for another hour or so until we bring the less dangerous ones in here for food. So you eat the less dangerous ones? We <laughs> we give them food here and not in their cells. <laughs> you know, I feel like I feel like you knew what I meant and then you're just doing this. <laughs> Sam is highly amused by the pedantry of that answer. Sam and Rook just figured out they had the same last name, so. Yeah. <laughs> last name question mark. <laughs> <laughs> the question mark being the important distinction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let me let me get your opinion on something here. Fairly recently, we had some sort of floating thing in the sky that was all like, yo, we're going to blow your city up. And then there's an army, or there was briefly an army outside the gate. Um, I don't know if it's still there. I scared them off. Right. Uh, how does that strike you, good sir, from the street? Or the... Jail. Not from the street. I've got a house. Well, I mean, it's like the man on the oh, street. Oh, it, it's yeah. really not fun when people turn that around on you, is it? <laughs> That's not actually what happened right there, but okay. <laughs> nice try, though, champ. Thanks. Anyway, we, being a guard, I personally believe in the rule of law. And regardless of what spooky things are coming from the sky, if we can enforce the law to the citizens they will, they'll at least have some sort of stability so some giant green monster going around and killing kids and then being imprisoned and then killing a prisoner and then breaking out and then kicking one of the uh, rightfully empowered representatives of the gods in the middle of town that sort of thing shouldn't fly I mean we can kick him off the cliff and make him fly I'd be okay with that yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't think anyone here, myself included, uh, agrees with anything that's happened with that giant green rage monster from the last handful of sessions. I mean, um, a couple days, but uh, I, no, that's it. Uh, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> you, you're no representing his side tomorrow. That D&D podcast is released under a Creative Commons 4.0 attribution, non-commercial, no derivative license. Feel free to share with friends, but don't cut anything out and don't sell our work. Dungeon World intro music is Back to the Woods by Jason Shaw. You can find Jason's music on the Free Music Archive. And our outro music is Dirt Roads by Kevin McLeod. His music can also be found on the Free Music Archive. See the show notes for any music used in the individual episodes and visit us at thatdndpodcast.com. Dungeon World is the property of Sage Latora and Adam Koval. All other copyrighted content is owned by their associated copyright holder. Mm-hmm.